Hey, how's it going? Mr. Deadman of the Deadman's Tone Podcast. Guys and ladies, let me ask you guys a very simple question. What is the better thing to do here? Let's say a live streamer. I, I don't know if you're familiar with live streams, but they're usually not censored, no filter, people just talking off the cuff. Maybe there's a script, maybe not, whatever. But you present ideas, sometimes you think out loud. What is the better thing to do when someone brings up a conspiracy theory or a question that might be controversial or whatever? Is it better to just sever ties with them and cast them out and have that question unanswered? Or is it better to maybe challenge it on a later date, present answers, present evidence or uh, evidence? Everyone has their evidence. Everyone has their stats. Everyone has their material. But present stuff that might help clarify things. I think it's that. I think it's better to challenge the information and clarify it. Because when you cast people out, let's say here with Diamond and Silk, when you cast them out, when you sever ties and you make this statement, this big statement, what it does is it doesn't answer the questions they present. What it does is the people that follow them, the people that consume their content, then think, oh, they might actually have something to it. There might actually be something to this. It emboldens them. That's what it does. Some will say, oh, but it's risky because you're putting misinformation out there. Okay. Okay. Hold on here. Everyone's worried about misinformation. But this is America. Free speech. Come on. Like, people are going to talk and they're going to say things. They're going to question things. And they should. They have a right to. And they're legit questions, so answer them. And some things that <coughs> Diamond Silk <coughs> well, talked about are actually, I mean, I kind of wonder myself. So what happened here? Well, Diamond and Silk said some things during a live stream, and because of what they said, Fox Nation cut ties with them. Diamond and Silk are MAGA Trump supporters, uh, the vlogger superstars. And, uh, which is not a problem for Fox News. They like that sort of thing. But what they don't like is when you say something that's too far. It's weird for Fox to just cut ties. I mean, especially now when, uh, with an election coming up very soon, it seems like it would be a better tactic to keep your supporters uh, together and maybe work on maybe dispelling any sort of, dispelling any sort of myths or whatever and answering those questions that, that they brought up. So what did Diamond and Silk talk about? What did they say? Well, during the live stream, uh, they were talking about, they had presented questions like Diamond asked, what I need to know is how many bodies have passed away in New York? And what I need to know is who has the bodies? Now, this is something that could easily be answered, right? It should be easily answered. It should be something that you just kick her off the platform right hmm. you kick her off it makes it seem like there's something to it how many people have passed away in New York and that is a legit question although someone could say just look at the stats look look at the numbers but hold on here especially when I don't know if you've been paying attention but apparently if someone dies and it may not even be because of COVID-19 because of the Wuhan flu but they had it in them, then they're just gonna classify it as a COVID death. And that's what they're doing. You could go to the hospital for something completely unrelated. You could die in an auto accident. If you have COVID-19 in your body and you die, it's a COVID-19 death. That's how, they're, that's how they're doing it. Now those are extreme scenarios. Yeah, I don't know how many of them are, are in that area, are being, uh, doctor like that because that's what that is but that's that is happening um so the, there is a question there how often does that happen right um and who has the bodies well that that could easily be shown by showing the uh what well, they have trucks they have more trucks because the morgues are full right now so they have mobile morgues pretty much mobile uh freezers where they're storing the bodies until they can be buried uh you know somewhere else buried or burned most likely burned hmm but then they go on to say 
I need for somebody who does investigative work to call the morgues, to call the funeral homes. We need to know because I don't trust anything else that comes out of his mouth. Something's not right here. Okay. Now I'll probably talk about Cumo. Okay. All right. Well, you know, calling for people to call the morgue, not a not a smart move. But is it something to be completely deplatformed? No. No. I mean, it's not a call of action for violence. It's just call for phone calls. They're annoying. They're annoying. Oh. But it's it's not like a violation of free speech or anything like that. Um, and of course, one question is, is this virus being deliberately spread? Look, I don't know if you're aware, but apparently, and you can see it for yourself. There's been articles. There's been... It's been cited that yes, they have. There's been situations where uh, someone from China was arrested, and they had a vial on them, a vial of, uh, well, of SARS. And this is not a joke. This is not a joke at all. I mean, why would uh, why would people from China, why would Chinese people be coming? In? Some of them, some, some. Let me just put that some. Why would this be happening? Why would there be some Chinese people coming in with um, these vials on them? These vials of viruses. Where are you going, man? Where are you going with this? Right? Is it being deliberately spread? I mean, <laughs> that might be. I don't know. It's one thing to ask and something to explore. What's going on there? What is the answer? People just dismiss it. Oh, that's a conspiracy theory. Whatever, whatever. Okay. You might think it's conspiracy. You might think it's, it's nothing. Then you'll find the answer, right? If you explore it, you'll find the answer if it's nothing. Hmm. Anyway. Silk goes on to say that maybe this disease was man-made or engineered. Now, I've been following the coronavirus since... The, pretty much the outbreak in China. And even around then, there's been reports coming from India and some other place. I think mostly India. I think there was a, an article I saw from India that was talking about looking at the RNA of the virus and how it has a similar pattern to other viruses like AIDS. And it looked like it could be possible that it was engineered. Could be possible. And there's still that... So some people try to make it a conspiracy theory that it is likely that this virus came out from a, a viral viral lab. <laughs> some people are just saying that's a conspiracy theory. I don't know, man. If you follow the origins, go back to how this virus came out, where it originated from, and that there was a, a lab very close by. And there was even an article published from China talking about... <clears throat> How it's even possible. That's coming from China. Of course, they, who knows if you could find that now, knowing how the, the Communist Party operates. Probably try to censor that, crack down on that. But no, I mean, it is it is a legit question to ask. Is this man-made? Is it engineered? I mean, there's, there's a lot of, I would say the preponderance of the evidence leans towards this came from a facility. That's my opinion. It came, it most likely came from a facility. This was housed in a facility. They were experimenting with something and it leaked out. I'm not saying it leaked out on purpose. I'm saying someone botched, that maybe didn't wash their hands properly. Now that one report I talked about that came from China, they're saying that maybe the bat, it's possible that the bat could have bit one of the person. By the way, by the way, the person who was the whistleblower for this virus wasn't at a wet market. What, I believe, what, did, did he work at that facility? I, it was one of the doctors there. <sighs> anyway. But le legit questions to ask. Now, the other question they present is, uh, is there, does the World Health Organization have a switch to turn this virus on and off? Obviously not. You could debunk that. That's pretty stupid. That's silly. Um, like, now, there, I would ask, why is... The World Health Organization, like a puppet of China, why won't they acknowledge Taiwan, right? How come they don't acknowledge them or recognize them, right? 
Are they really a World Health Organization? Are they uh, playing politics? And they don't want to piss off China. Hmm. Oh, and why is the WHO looking the other way? Oh, praising China's for their praising China for their response when China was, I don't know, locking people in their apartments, welding them into their apartments. That happened. They also, if someone was sick and they fell, regardless if they're dead or not, they'll bag them and throw them in a in a crematorium. That happened. They throw them. There's videos. You can, I'm not making this up. There's videos of it. You can see it. It's still archived. Kiwi Farms. I love that place. I love the, I love that place so much. If you doubt anything I'm telling you, you can go see it for yourself. I'm not saying read some post someone put. I'm saying look at the videos and you judge. Read the articles and you judge. <laughs> right? There's something to that. Anyway, they also bring up, uh, they do bring up the 5G conspiracy, the 5G technology conspiracy. Okay. All right. Well, um, that is a conspiracy that, of course, has led to uh, 5G towers to be burned, damage of property. Okay. Um, once again, though, that is a conspiracy. That is a, that is a question that could easily be dismissed by someone explaining one explaining the the origin of this virus go go back to where this virus began how it started i think i think part of the reason of the confusion is that the information coming out from china isn't really clear and it's filtered and right now they are trying to, even right now, even before right now, you know, they try to correct, correct certain things to make sure that their narrative is, is intact, right? First, they try to blame America. That's funny. They try to blame uh, the U.S. military. Oh, that's weird. Try to blame Trump. Okay. Now they're trying to say, oh, no, man, it was clearly natural. Yet they do nothing about their wet markets. Okay. They ask questions. Diamond and Silk did. They ask questions. You might not agree with it. Okay. But I say, well, why don't why doesn't Fox Nation like say, hey, on your next live stream, why don't y'all bring in guests? Uh, you know, have we could connect you guys with other advisors or uh, health experts or other doctors, and you guys could interview them you could get that information right you can even present that information to your viewers where it wouldn't just be empty questions that lead nowhere but they would they would have an answer a decent answer maybe right because see even if you do agree that the 5g technology thing is a conspiracy it needs to be nipped in the bud okay well it's too late for that now it's it, like uh, for these stream these streamers especially if they're uh they have some sort of support with like let's say fox nation whatever they have the opportunity to bring people on the show to talk about it to try to debunk it right man it's it's not hard to do it's not complicated i don't really see this as any reason to really just sever ties with them completely of course i don't run fox nation it's up to them what they do but i think it's kind of silly it was up to me i would talk to them like if, if i ran i would talk to them and and try to help them get certain guests on so they can get the answers and point them in the direction hey you can get the answers by going here or, hey check this out you might find what you're looking for there okay but you got to keep an open mind on that right hmm But anyway, what do you guys think about this? Now, I know some viewers might be like, fuck Diamond and Silk, they're, they're MAGA supporters, they're Trump supporters. That shouldn't be a basis. It That should not be a basis just because they support Trump and they're all about MAGA, whatever. That shouldn't be a basis to just dismiss them outright. I mean, 
There's people on the left that, that promote conspiracy theories all the time, and nothing happens to them. Like the Trump Russia collusion thing, which has no backing, <laughs> had no backing from the beginning, and they kept pushing that, right? <laughs> yeah, those people were still on. It's just funny. It's funny to me. Anyway, but what do y'all think about this? Let me know in the comments section. And uh, and by the way, I'm not talking about this because of politics or whatever. I'm talking about this because I, I think it's... I think it's interesting that you have people present information. And the answer to... Instead of trying to dismiss... Oh, sorry. Instead of trying to debunk it, they just are dismissed and brushed away. Which, that never helps. That never helps. If anything, it leaves those that consume that content to just be stuck in a bubble of questions. Oh, shit. See, now I'm being hacked. Uh oh, what's happening here? See? That could be 5G technology interfering with me. I have no idea. I don't know what that was. But, uh, yeah, that's never... A, that's not a good idea. That's how, like... Those little bubbles of like, uh, like the alt right, really racist guys. That's that's what happens with them, right? They get instead of their, uh, their 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 dumb ideas being challenged and being debunked, they are put out into a corner where their like minded people go, and then they just fester and fester and then grow and unchallenged. Okay, that's not a good idea. Hmm. I think the scar's done. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna leave it here. Yeah, have a good one.